Okay, Lady Ada, what is this? Hey, everybody, and welcome to this week's Show and Tell. We run this every single Wednesday at 7.30 p.m. Eastern Time. This is your chance to come on by and visit us. We're here at the Ada Food Factory, me, Miss Lady Ada, Mr. Lady Ada. But uh, if you've got a computer and a webcam or a phone with a screen and webcam, you can come on by and show us what you're working on, whether it's 3D printing or crafting or cosplay or sewing or stitching or FEMO, whatever you're working on, we'd love to see it and share it with everybody else. We're here till 7.50, so we'll be around for about 20 minutes. Uh, when we call on you, please unmute your mic and show us what you're doing in two, three minutes so we can get to everybody. And we're going to start with some Adafruit peeps. So maybe kick it off, Scott. Hello. Uh, happy Wednesday. Happy Wednesday. Um, first and foremost, I wanted to encourage people to try the latest unstable version of CircuitPython. We're now in beta phase, meaning we're trying to get stable. We're adding a few more things, and then we'll hammer out some bugs, and then we'll call it stable. Um, happy beta day. We're, yay. All right. We'll be sending you this poster soon. This is our new CircuitPython 4 poster. Yeah, and we got permission from Nordic. Yeah, Nordic said, logo. okay, so that means there's Bluetooth in it, right, Scott? There is. Uh, Dan will tell you more about that later. Yeah, but, uh, I was I've been working on display stuff a bunch, and I we had display I/O for a while just for the Halloween, uh, but I actually made it so that you can just hook up a display, and if I hit reset, you'll see that I get my test colors, making sure the colors are correct, mm -hmm. and then oh. when the code.py finishes, you actually get a blinka on the screen. And this is where it'll tell you uh, if there was any error messages, what they were. Um, so that's going to come later. But uh, I want to take a little Linux, you know, in like the corner, it has little tucks. Yeah, <laughs> we'll have, like, <laughs> we'll have extensions load up like the old Apple days. Do like, like I'll have a D message, um, okay? Images, music. Loading. Yeah, I. it wouldn't be uh, wrong to think that's influence, influential on the kind of uh, style that we're going for. Okay, uh, well, this, is, this will be using GM Chaos. I was thinking about that too because I got the IBM Model M. I want to hook it up and have Jam Chaos on my on my screen. Amazing! Yeah, Jam Chaos, <laughs> rock out! <laughs> uh, yeah, so uh, keep an eye out for Beta Zero. Beta One will probably come pretty quickly because I actually fixed colors after I released Beta Zero. Um, so yeah, uh, if you want to help out and try that out, uh, we'd love help testing displays and Bluetooth. So find and us yeah. on Discord. It's very exciting. Okay. All right, sweet. Next up, Noah and Pedro. You got some glone action going on here. What is this? Hey guys, yes. so this is another restoration of a vintage toy. It's by Hasbro, 1969. This was before the light bright, I believe. Um, so again, this is another Phil idea. Hey, take this cool old toy and modernize it with Cricut and it's your playground. So uh, we have a bunch of little CPXs around here. I think this is one of the coolest things right here is utilizing our CPX case adding little adapter bits for them. On the back, there is a quarter 20, and we're just using a bunch of our camera <laughs> bits to connect all of these. We printed these little pegs that all plug into this construction kit here. And then inside of it, we have it powered by a Cricut, like a Playground Express on top, and then a continuous servo that's just engaging the little color wheel in here. There's a bunch of like holes in it that the standoffs go into, and it just turns the whole wheel. Uh, you can add more you know, triggers with all of the um, the sensor is on it. You use MakeCode or CircuitPython on it. And uh, yeah, just a bunch of different uh, 3D printable parts. There was a lot of like broken pieces I was able to 3D print again. So we have all the source files for those if anybody has this really cool old toy. Um, my son was able to construct a bunch of things, exactly some of the things that he made with it. And I bet there's a community of just like super Astrolite fans. And all, yeah. All the yeah, this was this came out when the, Jets, the Jetsons were popular. So imagine all the kids having a Really cool time making like futuristic cities with it, and you can now at home if you could get if you go on like eBay, they're like about fifty bucks, I think, and they're all in pretty good uh, condition. You can go ahead and print out all of your adapters too. All our files are available online, and then another project uh, partnership with uh, Cartoon Network and uh, Microsoft. We have this really cool the wand form of Pearl from Steven Universe. So it's all. Um, Cardboard construction, there's a foam board for the blade. Uh, we have a whole guide on this. Everything can be cut out. They, uh, of course, they gave us all the at sets so we can build all the swords for this, but it's all paper and foam. So any kid in the school can build this. 
Uh, no soldering required for any of the connections. It's all just the alligator connections in SCPX down uh, down at the pommel right here. And we're just using a little tilt. So when it goes, uh, you tilt it nine degrees. So. It was making noise a second ago. <laughs> yeah, there it goes. There it goes. had it in the wrong orientation. It just does a little sparkle animation that's uh, default on the make code. And Sweet. of course, all of the uh, patterns for cutting all this out. This is all done by hand, actually. You can just draw all of the uh, patterns that they gave us. You can build your own super cool wand form of Pearl's really cool uh, spear here. And we'll be coming up with a bunch more uh, like cosplay type projects. I think next week we'll do like shield, do like LED whips. There's a bunch of cool stuff that John is also working on too. So definitely uh, check out. All right. Stay tuned for more. Okay, we'll check with John shortly. Next up, Kenny, what, what are you snaking? I am snaking NFC and RFID. Um, Look at that. Classic we, breakout. We do, yes, this classic breakout. Um, it turns out that we never got around to updating the guide for CircuitPython and uh, Raspberry Pi. Um, and it works perfectly with both. Uh, we have a great CircuitPython library for it. And so uh, I am currently uh, updating that guide so that we've got the CircuitPython code on there um, with examples and um, wiring diagrams for Raspberry Pi and for uh, Feather. So this is using I squared C and um, we have the option for SPI and UART as well, which I will show um, all of those on the guide so you can pick which one you want with these little jumpers. Um, but I, it doesn't actually do anything. It, it, it shows up in the in the REPL, but when you when you touch the card to it, it's- I see it's it blinks. Blink. Sometimes it's blinking. No, I don't think it is. I thought it was okay. too, but it's not. Um, no. But it shows it shows the idea of the card um, in in the REPL, so you can you can do that, and you can also use this library to write to cards, so you can write some data to your card if you wanted to do that. But that is what I have been up to this week. And for the viewers who, who may not be wondering, like, well, wow, you know, over the summer, all these um, products that Adafruit makes suddenly got these amazingly detailed, beautiful guides on how to use Circuit Python with all the sensors and displays and breakouts and level shifters or whatever. Who made these amazing printing diagrams and worked on that code? Well, that's Katni, um, who spearheaded that and is, uh, you know, does so much with CircuitPython um, and writes a ton of code and examples and, and fritzings. And yeah, that's basically the reason why we have so many people, especially with Raspberry Pi, that have um, started taking on and, and using CircuitPython, which is very exciting. Our, our libraries are becoming popular. Yes, it's okay. been excellent. And uh, it's also on the purple theme, which is good. Yes, All right. Exactly. <laughs> Thanks, up, JP. Hey, What's guys. in the workshop? All right, so I uh, showed this project on my workshop live stream last week, and I have a guide that is in um, progress right now. Uh, I'm actually about to update the guide because what this project is is it's using our Grand Central uh, M4 Express and 16 potentiometers to control uh, MIDI software or, or, or a synthesizer software that's using MIDI over USB in CircuitPython. Now, that was like a hot off the press um, implementation that was a little bit uh, bare bones. And uh, Lamour has been writing a USB MIDI library for CircuitPython that'll make this uh, a little higher level, a little easier to use. So I'm gonna update the guide to include that. Um, but I thought I'd show a little demo of, um, I have a laptop over here and I'm controlling uh, a bunch of different, 16 different settings. The, the top row here is uh, pitch. So I have a, an eight note pitch sequencer and then the bottom control effects and filters and things. So I'll just show you a couple examples of that real quick. Should be able to hear that, yeah? Yeah. So the notes are all controlled by this top row so I can go and change those. So now we have a different tune. And now go and add in uh, some filter sweep. And some delay. To the No One Pedro project. Yeah, it goes quite well with the yeah. extra light. When you're, when you're playing that, it, it looks like that. That's yeah. cool. <laughs> the theme park that we live inside yeah. of. That's the theme, the theme that park at Logan's Run. So this has been a lot of fun, and the thing I love about it is it puts physical knobs to virtual knobs um, using a, an open source synth that's called VCV Rack, 
which is tons of fun to use, but you're always just clicking things and you can only click one thing at a time. Here you can twiddle a bunch of knobs much, much more quickly. Uh, and I think I'll also be uh, exploring some other inputs like endless encoders, rotary encoders with push buttons and some other things in the future on this because it's a super powerful platform, the, the Grand Central for doing this kind of stuff. Um, so look for that. We should be updating the guide yeah. soon. And then uh, a quick tease for my live stream for tomorrow. I have a little palm mounted Circuit Playground Express. Let me fire that up. This is uh, an LED project, so it won't look that great on video right now, but I'm angling it. And thankfully our case by Mike Dole for the Circuit Playground Express definitely makes NeoPixels look better than, than dead on because we get some cool. Yeah, and we can see them, it's like red and, red and blue. Blue, and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit a button, and we're going to switch colors, and then we're going to play a little song from a Cartoon Network show that you might recognize, Steven Universe. So I'm going to hit this. I'm going to fuse to magenta. And there you go. So that's a little tease for the uh, project tomorrow, running on Circuit Playground Express in Make Code. Thanks to our friends at Cartoon Network. So please tune in at four o'clock Eastern time for John Park's workshop. And another teaser, we're mm -hmm. um, announced uh, just last week and this week, Make Code Arcade is out and JP is yeah. going to be doing a little bit of dabbling in Make Code Arcade if you wanted to yeah. write video games. There's no easier way. This is amazing what yes. they've done. Um, they've made block based, so we can make sprites. It's like, if you use Make Code before, imagine using it for programming. Making games. Really yeah. exciting. Yep. Yes. We'll have some videos on um, Ask an yeah. Engineer tonight, too, for that. Yeah. All so right. come by my Make Code Minute. I'm going to start doing uh, Arcade during the Make Code Minute. So we'll we'll, uh, we'll start learning that together and build some games. It's a lot of fun. Okay. Yeah. Sweet. All right. All right, Erin. Lovely to see you. Uh, this week, I was playing with my 3D printer, and I made myself a crazy cool sort of steampunk layout. Whoa. Hey. I put a whole bunch of pieces. I did a copper patina sort of paint job on it. And let me go ahead. I put a, one of these vintage bulbs that you see at like Starbucks inside there. Uh, I'm going to turn it on and probably blow things out. Yeah, a little bit. But uh, this is my nice. new lamp for above my sewing table. And I'm just delighted with it. It's all, all lots of fun. So. That's cool. All right. Thank you for wearing purple also, by the way. <laughs> Always. <laughs> nice. Uh, and you have some. Uh, you've also been working on some guide updates. We published the Flora Umbrella update guide. What did you do? What did you do there? We'll chat about it on the show as well. Yeah, I went back and um, and did some some updates to some of the real popular fun guides um, that used a Flora and updated them so that we can use the Circuit Playground with them and do some of the coding in Make Code instead of Arduino. So making things like the Flora Umbrella, which is a super cool project, or um, went back and updated the. Um, conductive thread sewable NeoPixels guide so that you can um, actually, without having to solder or anything like that, do some uh, fabric projects just sewing NeoPixels to a circuit playground. Yeah, I think it's um, I think it's neat because like I said, I looked at the floor umbrella and what was cool was with a project that had like quite a few parts and it was a little bit, not like advanced, but it was a pretty big build and then you're like, oh yeah, the color sensing is built into the circuit playground express you know, and make code and it just worked, you know, it's like it actually worked really well, <laughs> maybe a little bit better than the, uh, the breakout board. Um, so that's cool. So we'll be doing some more uh, flora projects. We'll be updating them because circuit playground can do so much all on its own. Just so neat. It's definitely easier. Right? Things are just, just getting easier and easier. So it's exciting. All right, cool. Well, more, more glowing in the new year. All right, next up, let's check in with Dan and then we'll go to JMK and toaster. Okay, Dan, what do you have to do? Okay. So, as, as Scott uh, mentioned, we've got the yearly report inside um, the latest beta of CircuitPython. And to show you how that works, I've made up a little kind of ridiculous demo here. Here we've got um, Circus Python. This is the cousin of CircuitPython. What was the original uh, name before we changed our mind? Right, let me stack, let me put something. I'll put a board underneath here to tilt this up a little bit. And okay. we got Spotlight on, we got Adabot. We've got that poster that Phil showed uh, about Nordic. This is, uh, you know, up in the, and we have a ring of fire here. And we're going to have um, Blink and jump through that fire. So what I've got here, I've got a phone, no wires. No wires. Running the Adafruit. Nothing up your sleeve. <laughs> and uh, here we go. 
Wow. Yay. This is the first and live Bluetooth demo with uh, CircuitPython. Congratulations. Right. And we, we've had this app for a while and it's supported yeah. under Arduino, but now it's supported under CircuitPython. And I can also show you um, changing the colors, which may not come out very well. Oh, yeah. It's right. bright now. Right. Yeah. In fact, I have the brightness turned out to like 5%, so you can see that right now. Okay, green or blue fire. You're doing that all with yeah. the phone. Right. Amazing. I'll show that on the phone, yeah. So here's the color picker on the phone. Okay. And when I was making the thing go back and forth, we're using what's called the control pad on the phone. And I'm just using these two arrow buttons to make it go in and out. I can't, it's pretty hard to do this backwards. I know, it's, yeah. it's challenging. That's right. I was trying We're to. Doing We're doing it. We believe you. It's magic. It's a circus. That's right. So we've got Circus Python as part of Circuit Python. Okay. Right. Amazing. Good work. All right. Thank the you. Ring leader. All right. Okay. Okay, um, next up. We're going to go JMK. And JMK. Wrap up with Chester, so Welcome let's... back. Hey, JMK. Hi. Um, so I'm um, sorry the microphone isn't working, so I'm using my backup. It might not sound like great. You're good. You're fine. Uh, so I'm um, basically I have two things to show. One is basically the entire JMKOS website got redone, like just wow. a few days ago. So um, this is the new website. Um, I sort of made it so it's all one simple page. And um, if you want to, like, what is it? Why use it? How do I get it? How is it made? And you can just learn about JMKOS and learn how to um, do things with it just by moving around on this page, you know, menus and, and, and stuff like that, which makes things simpler and less annoying. And um, also, there's a um, new um, sort of this thing called the um, JMK Launcher which is um, also it up here. Um, it's it basically, I basically made my own file extension. It's called JAP2 and or JAP3. The number at the end represents what version of Python it is. Um, I'm just showing you the Python 2 version just because for some reason version three um, keeps like cutting off the end. So um, basically you open it and see this temp folder is empty. You open it, and now suddenly there's a bunch of files in here. Basically, this JAP2 is a zip file containing the code of your app, that and um, the properties of the app and the and the code of the app. And um, once you quit it, it deletes those files. So uh, that's basically a little quick way to. I made my own extension, and right now it's only available for Windows, just because I don't have a working Mac at like at home, so I can't test it. But I'm working on it, and um, and all you have to do is open it with this JAP launcher, and it opens. Um, and the other thing I wanted to show, I need to get out of screen share, is um, I hacked this Nintendo 3DS backwards. Um, wow, that's nice. But um. These things, I realized, they're really easy to hack, like very, very easy. And you can see that it's backwards, but that's MS-DOS running. It's emulated on this thing. And what's really cool is um, you can, it's basically just um, retro art, which is basically like a game console emulator. So any game console that, this, that can run on this properly let, um, will run on it. And it's, it's, it's in an app. It's not even like running DOS. It's actually a, a simple little app that basically contains DOS. And what's super funny is um, it's a 3DS, like a Nintendo 3DS. So it's got the slider on the side, 3D, like how 3D will it look. It looks horrible on camera, cause yeah. it doesn't work, so it doesn't show anything on camera. But um, basically, there's another set of pixels on the display, like another basically the same resolution pixels that are like the 3D ones. So essentially turning up the slider doubles the resolution of the device, which is really cool because you can basically enhance like what everything looks like just by turning up the slider, which is super cool. All right. Amazing. Good showing. Well, um, 
send a, if you need a, a sticker, you know, drop a note. And if you yeah. want us to do another post about JMK um, OS website update, um, you know how to get a hold of us. Yep. Okay. Okay. All right. Good to see you again. All right. Last up, Toaster. Toaster, welcome back. Hi. What you um, got? Can you guys hear me okay? Yep. yep. Sorry, I'm sitting on my floor right now. Um, I just got to plug this in to an outlet. So basically, you, I know that you guys have a uh, pan and tilt uh, kit thing, right? Mm-hmm. So this is what I, I've built my own. Ooh, that's and nice. Servers. And the code that's running on it right now, oh, um, one second. The ground of one of the servos got disconnected. That's not why it's not running, but I can just easily fix that. See, now it's rotating both ways. Now that the second servo is. Oh, yeah. nice. Panning and tilting. Yep. Okay, what's controlling it? It's a... Uh, so I found, guess what I found in my, like, guess what I dis discovered. What did you uh, discover? In my, like, Arduino Uno. Oh. I, this is an old, I have an old kit of Arduino Uno, like an Arduino starter kit. And then I decided, oh, I might as well, like, use it for once. So I just have, obviously, power... Arduino power hooked up to power, stuff like that. Uh, and then the servos are just connected to the digital pins and um, ground. And I just wrote a sketch to say, oh, servo one, do this. Servo two, do this. Stuff like that. Nice. All right. Well, it looks and cool. Good, good, good job with the build. Wait, he's off. Okay, back. I get back. Okay, so basically, this is going to be an automated cat laser toy for my cat. Good. Yeah. So I have this laser diode. Yeah. Although I need a whatever it was called, um, something that makes the makes it less that widens slower. Like a resistor or something? No, uh, it's like a lens type thing. Oh, you need a lens for it to, to make it um, spread out or not spread out, yeah. Yeah, I need a lens because right now, once it if it goes like on the wall, it's like this wide. Ah, uh, yeah, so like a really collimator. Like a dot. So I need like uh, a, col a collimator. Yeah, collimator. Yep, collimator. Pardon? Collimator lens. Yeah, collimator lens. That's what I need for this. Okay. So All I'm right. going to attach this to the to the tilting servo. And then too, if I have a laser toy for my cat. Sweet. Your cat's going to love that. 100% programmable, programmable um, toy laser. Very cool. Yay. All right. Well, um, for your project, you can send us a note, support at adafruit.com for a sticker, or you can wait till it's done. Your choice. One Thanks, second. Mister. What was that? Do I have to pay for shipping with the sticker? No, yeah. it's free. It's free, free. Yeah, have your folks email support it free. We send you a free sticker. It's free. No cost of entry. Yeah. No shipping and handling. Yeah, it works out. You get a free sticker. That'd be that'd be crummy if we said pay for shipping. Yeah, that'd be lame. <laughs> All right. Well, All right. that's our show and tell tonight, Thank everyone. You, Thank you so much, Chester. Thank you, Scott. Well, oh, Kenny's Patty. got its stamp. No, he's got this, this sword in a futuristic city. All right, JP, if you could play us out, I'll. Um, JP's already on it. And then, yeah. Dance. It's got Circus Python. Circus. And we've got. Use my park here. Look at this. And we got Aaron. I want to imagine that Cat just goes around and stamps everything. Like, this is mine now. Yeah. So now, Cat <laughs> <laughs> Well, thanks, everybody. We'll see everybody ask an engineer 8 p.m. Just a couple minutes. And we're here every single week, 7.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Thank, Thank you for making you. us the best half an hour much of our lives every single week. Love you, folks. All right. See you soon.